M0FXP, welcome to my channel. So you may have bought a hotspot like this, but when it turns up, it you can't log into it. And the reason that you can't log into it is because some of them are being released with an operating system, not Pi Star, but O Star. So this is what O Star looks like. There is a login procedure for doing this. So what you do is turn the unit on. So hold down the on button and then look in your Wi-Fi um, thing here and look at your different Wi-Fi connections and what you're looking for is one that says O star 16 B2 or a similar number. Once you've got that, click on it and connect and the password it will ask for will be O star, see it here, O star at and then there will be different numbers and letters here like this one's 16 B2 but yours will be different. It, but just remember it's O star at then the numbers then log in and then you will get to the configuration page which I suppose is similar to Pi Star and because I, I haven't got it I can't actually use it but I'm gonna be able to test it once the unit gets here but really to be honest as soon as it does get here I'll be um, f changing it over to Pi Star. I know that you can do that because my friend has got one of these and he reloaded Pi Star onto his SD card uh, but it was a bit fiddly. So 7.3 hope this helps you set up your O Star hotspot that looks like this. But If you've got an RF Finder one it looks like they come with Pi Star anyway so Really, the advice is get the one that's got Pi Star. Um, so just double check because it's a nice looking hotspot, has a battery built into it, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's a, you know, a self-contained unit, color screen. And the good thing about it is that it's VHF and UHF and it's dual hat or single hat. So if you want to use um, two time slots or you know, slot one and slot two, on DMR, you can, and that, that's got to be worth it. And if you can pick these up for nearer to the uh, sort of 100, 120 pound, then you've got yourself a bargain. So 73, bye for now, all the best.